Good afternoon, Howard Wig, Code Green, Sync Tech, Hawaii. This is March 18th, 2019, and we are talking about maybe the most important energy tsunami on the horizon. And in this case, it's a very good tsunami, but it will hopefully be taking us over pretty gosh darn soon. And if we're not prepared for it, it's going to wash over us and we're not going to know what to hit us, which is why we have today maybe Hawaii's leading storage guy. He's been in the business for longer than some of you out there have been on the planet. A <laughs> real, real storage pioneer. So welcome, Nick Dizan. Hi, thanks, Howard. Of Nidon Clean Energy. And we got to know one another, Nick, 20-something years ago. About 20 ago. years ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you, you had a uh, project which involves storage. I, when we talk storage, we're talking battery storage here in lieu of direct e electrical current from the production plant. And that was really a pioneering effort back then. Yeah, there weren't a lot of standards back then, mm -hmm. not a lot yeah. of um, um, information on how to design mm -hmm. battery systems. So had to develop that uh, ourselves, mm -hmm. myself, uh, through mo you know, most of that, gosh, most of the past 15 mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. I, I remember you're going through fits and starts and uh, something, you'd have to try another approach. But, you know, that, that's how things evolve, yeah. Yeah, yeah, battery yeah. technology has changed radically mm -hmm, in the past mm -hmm, seven mm -hmm. years. But more important, or just as importantly, so has um, the inverter converters mm -hmm, and the software mm -hmm. that controls it, mm -hmm. as well as the, the regulatory environment and the interconnection environment with the utility. Things have gone, you know, completely changed. And it's a high-speed evolution that's picking up even more speed. Mm -hmm. And something called density. Yeah. Density in the batteries. I, I, can ha I have a little example, right? Right there. <laughs> I've gone through some evolution myself recently, one of which is I had a pacemaker installed. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cardiologist said, he showed me readouts and said, Howard, look at this. No heartbeat for three seconds. You should have been dead. <laughs> oh, okay. I guess I'll do a pacemaker. And the deal is, oh, this, it, if you don't know what it is, it, it, it controls your, your heartbeat. And it's good not for one, oh, and it's powered by a battery right up here. Not good for one year, not good for three, good for 15 years. And that's, I'm at 50 beats, so 50 beats a minute times 60 is an hour, times 24 is a day, times 365 is a year times 15, you're getting way, way, way up in the billions of pulses. And they think it's going to give me those billions of pulses by this teeny little battery here. That is what we call density. Right. So it's I, I don't know if, if it's uh, that, if it has that type of improvement in, out in the, the building type world. But... Uh, well, that's where we need to be. Yeah. In your case, uh, my father had one too. Mm -hmm. The strength of the signal that's needed to keep your heart in proper time mm -hmm. is well known. Mm -hmm. So the strength of the signal versus how much battery storage you need. So, of course, with the newer lithium-ion technology where mm -hmm. they're, mm -hmm. they've micronized it so much more, uh, they can pack in a lot of power in a small amount of space. Mm -hmm. But the key is... The load is known. It's a predictable, yeah, yeah. non-varied load. And hopefully it's smooth. <laughs> it better be smooth in this case. The soft, the, yeah. uh, one of the improvements in pacemakers, mm -hmm. though, is they have load-following capabilities now. Mm -hmm. So like if you're climbing stairs, mm -hmm. it'll actually speed up a little to match yeah. the amount of load that you're Good burning. Good point. Yeah, they put me on a treadmill and I can go up to 130. Yeah. That's right. So in the yeah. old days, the original pacemakers couldn't do that. These newer yeah. ones are yeah. programmable, and based on the data it collects as mm -hmm. you go through mm -hmm. your day, they can tune it to match how you, how your li what your yeah. lifestyle is. And that's a key part of energy storage. 
what is the mm -hmm. load profile? Now in your human body, mm -hmm. that's a fixed range of power, even with load following. Mm -hmm. But on a home, when the microwave goes on simultaneously with the, the, with the honey I'm girl hungry. firing up the hair dryer, mm -hmm. and maybe pops firing up the coffee, and, and sons mm -hmm. over there on the computer. And the refrigerator door is going the refrigerator is going, yeah, and, yeah, and yeah, mom yeah. turns on the washing machine, mm -hmm. all right? People, have an expectation of energy storage that it's going to be as transparent in terms of use as being connected to HECO, MECO, HELCO, or KIUC. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But very few battery guys, renewable mm -hmm. energy, energy storage guys, design to that. In fact, mm -hmm. almost nobody designs to that. So, so you're going to have a, a brown out within your own home and somebody, oh, oh. Honey girl, turn off that uh, hair, hair dryer or whatever for a while. Yeah, yeah or you're, you're buying a pre-packaged system like the Tesla Powerwall or something from LG or Tabuchi or, you know, any of those flavor of batteries, which usually come in a couple of sizes. And mm -hmm. those are not designed to take you off grid. And yeah. the, the, the yeah. power converters, the inverters, the intelligence of the system is not designed for that. Mm -hmm. So they're selling it as uh, backup power, not even truly time of use, but more as backup power. And in a backup mm -hmm. power mode, you'll never get your money back, and you're not going to get that kind of operation where you turn on the vacuum cleaner, the microwave, the coffee machine, mm -hmm. the hair dryer. Those things are not going not gonna to hold up. Those kind of batteries won't hold up mm -hmm. under those day-to-day -day real life conditions. Let, let's back up for a minute and look at Hawaii's energy situation where I work for the Hawaii Energy Office and our goal, our mantra is 100% clean electrical energy by the year 2045, which is not all that long away. And we're, we're ahead of schedule, but we might be re reaching a point of diminishing returns here. So the ideal is that we get more and more photovoltaics on more and more roofs and more and more photovoltaic farms, plus a lot more wind farms, plus any other renewable technology, biofuel, so forth, that comes along. And because we now have an excess of photovoltaic energy in the middle of a sunny day, such as we had today, the uh, utilities cannot ramp back far enough to absorb all of that energy, or I should say make use of it. So there's some wasted energy. So solution, more and more storage, more batteries such as we're going to be uh, looking at, which store, suck up all that good midday energy and then use it for what, whatever purposes we want. Uh, ideally, it's peak shaving in the evening. I should back up more and say that in the middle of the day, due to the photovoltaics on Hawaii's utilities, you, have, you, you can't absorb all of that excess energy. But then, just as energy use ramps up, when everybody comes home and all the tourists come in from the beach and shopping, whatever, and the hotels are going great guns, the restaurants are going great guns, everything. We have this unique situation of an evening peak, and ideally we would use that storage to shave that peak, cut down on the less efficient power plants as we uh, mothball more and more power plants. That, that's the ideal. And then looking way down the road, we combine that with the electric vehicles, which have these large capacity batteries. And the electric vehicle guys would have the option of entering into agreement with the utilities and saying, okay, you can use some of my, uh, my EV energy right now. Oops, no, I need, I need to get it charged, and so forth. And that gets a little complicated. But that is, oh, and then, of course, combine that with efficiency, where buildings are safer, more comfortable, and homes, but they use less and less and less energy. That, that's, that's my business there. Right. So that's been the problem. Mm -hmm. And in, in terms of, we've built so much PV so fast, both mm -hmm. residential mm -hmm. and commercial. And, the, and below the substation, at most locations, we're at 250%, which means the mm -hmm. amount of power that is being used there 
the, I mean, the amount of power being produced by the sun is two and a half times the amount of power that would normally be used mm -hmm. if there was no PV. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's excess power that's dangerously looking for somewhere to go. Mm -hmm. I mentioned it before where 10 years ago, the electrical contractors didn't worry about arc flash suits, arc flash rated breakers. Now we have to have those because there's power looking for ground, especially in the middle of the day, mm -hmm. and it can be very mm -hmm. dangerous. So what the, the state and the counties, and, and more importantly, the PUC and the utilities are facing, it's a dangerous, costly situation. That excess power is not benefiting the utility. They're actually paying for it and mm -hmm. unable to mm -hmm. use it when they need it, which is in the peak. So uh, if you can go to uh, slide number one. This is a, a first generation or 1.0 uh, lithium ion battery from Sony that we installed on a, a site here. This is an excel excellent example of what could happen in town. In, all, in buildings this small form factor, that's 35 kilowatt hour of battery there in a 19 inch rack form factor. Um, this is actually an older style battery. They've now come out, Sony Blue Ion has come out with uh, the 2.0 battery and also the LX battery, which has even greater energy density. Uh, a battery mm -hmm. like that can be in buildings in town behind the DMARC, behind the meter. Mm -hmm. And it, that's a situation where the customer is in, can be incentivized to have this because of the TOU, absorb mm -hmm. power during the day because they don't have PV on those buildings in town. Mm -hmm. But yeah, they there, can, There's no space. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's no roof space to speak mm -hmm. of. But downtown, they can start absorbing that excess power mm -hmm. in, from the surrounding areas and in their part of the grid and have that go into the peak. And in this case, you mentioned uh, 35 kW. You're not limited to that because That's these correct. are modular. You can stack as many of them as, as you see fit. Correct. So yeah. those, those systems can be absorbing the excess power from the grid all day long. And the nice mm -hmm. thing about it is, they can be set up to be under HECO control, mm -hmm. all right? So HECO is able to dispatch that power into the evening peak. As, the, as PV starts dropping off from three in the afternoon, it's a fairly dramatic drop off, mm -hmm. which then forces the generators at Kahe, AES, Kalailoa, h power to have to react rapidly load following. Mm -hmm. And those generators have been load following all day long. And they're, n they're not made for instantaneous load following. The these guys have to go, they're big. They have to go up slowly, they're going to go down slowly. Yeah. Oh, it's, yeah. It's, 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 those generators are not, not new, so they don't mm -hmm. have the latest technology. Mm -hmm. And then when you have PV shading going on in unpredictable patterns across the island, mm -hmm. they're reacting to the grid in, in sharp jolts, which mm -hmm. is not good mm -hmm. for them. And then the the switch gear at the substations are also not new in mm -hmm. or, and not designed to do that, to cooperate with the PV, with the mm -hmm. grid, with the generation, to balance out those jerks coming from shading. Now, the jerks aren't human jerks. These are what I would call spikes or dips. Right, from yeah. edge of cloud. When, when clouds mm -hmm. come over, it's unpredictable what areas of the island are covered. So the PV will suddenly drop off. You have, mm -hmm. you know, you may have megawatts drop off in in just a few seconds, mm -hmm. and then as soon as the cloud starts passing, those megawatts kick back yeah, in. Yeah, the the load goes up and down like a roller coaster. But on that very cheery note, we need to take a break. Howard Wig, Think Tech Hawaii, with Nick Dizon, president of Nidon Clean Energy. Back in a moment. Hey, Stan, the Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii. And they won't let me do political commentary, so I'm stuck doing energy stuff. But I really like energy stuff, so I'm going to keep on doing it. So join me every Friday on Stand Energy Man at lunchtime, at noon, on my lunch hour. We're going to talk about everything energy, especially if it begins with the word hydrogen. We're going to definitely be talking about it. We'll talk about how we can make Hawaii cleaner, how we can make the world a better place, just basically save the planet. Even Miss America can't even talk about stuff like that anymore. We got it nailed down here. So we'll see you on Friday at noon with Stan the Energy Man. Aloha. Hey, aloha. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii, airing every Wednesday here on Think Tech Hawaii, live from the studios. I'll bring you guests. I'll bring you information. 
about the things in security that matter to keeping you safe, your coworkers safe, your family safe, to keep our community safe. Uh, we want to teach you about those things in our industry that you know may be a little outside of your experience. So please join me because security matters. Aloha. Good afternoon again, Howard Rigg Think Tech Hawaii with Nick Dizon, president of Nidon Clean Energy. And we are talking about storage. And we've been sort of rambling all over the place, but uh, we've only got 14 minutes left. Why don't we go to the next slide and start getting into some specifics here? Okay, that's a, a residential system. Mm -hmm. And actually, it's in the residential areas where we see a lot of overproduction. So in a system o like... Overproduction of PV. Of PV, energy, energy. correct. Yeah. So we have okay. all this PV. The people leave home during the day to go to work, and they've got their PV system just generating away on the NEM, kicking it back into the grid. And the grid can't take it or, 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 and use it somewhere because it's stuck below the substation. In a situation like this... These batteries can be charged up, and as they are right now, and be put under HECO control for discharge into the peak. Mm -hmm. Or I would say into the peak, or as you said, PV energy goes up and down like a roller coaster. You, on a cloudy day, you can watch the meter. It's way, way up there. It might dip to half and then right back up again. And can uh, the batteries handle that? Can they smooth out that? Uh, they can. Those peaks and valleys. Yeah. They can. And, yeah. and the nice thing about something like that, and you can go to the next slide as well. So those were um, um, aqueous hybrid ion batteries. Now these are uh, lithium ion iron phosphate batteries. Uh, that first one was in IEA. This one's in Kaneohe. We choose the batteries based on what their charge discharge profile is, what the average C rate range is going to be, and what the uh, charge rate is from the sun in that area. And so there's, there's a lot of mathematical ca calculations. It's like three classroom chalkboards long, 20 lines of chalkboard mm -hmm. to do this. But in those areas, we're putting in systems that have the capability of absorbing the excess power from the grid, mm -hmm. right? And, and even below the substation, some houses are going to get shaded, some aren't. So we can actually smooth out what's happening below the substation. Mm -hmm. And then now this power and this ability to absorb can be under the control of HECO. Mm -hmm. And HECO didn't have to pay for it. Yeah, yeah the, the, customer the customer paid for it, and then you and I as taxpayers paid for some of it in, in the form of uh, the tax credits. Tax credits, yeah. right. Yeah. So it's a way to make it more democratic, mm -hmm. more representative, that even though others couldn't afford PV and batteries, they're mm -hmm. benefiting it from it as well. Mm -hmm. And in terms of we're talking about s smooth delivery of energy, there's something called Hertz. And Hawaiian Electric, as I understand it, likes to stay right at 60 hertz. And they, they get upset if they go above 60.5, or they get upset, or the grid gets a little upset if it goes below 59.5. So it has to stay in this very narrow band, which the storage can, can definitely help. Well, if, if you, it can help with that, and it can help with that excess power. And excess power can dirty up the power as well. Mm -hmm, I mean, mm -hmm. now what's, what's happening to your ground potential? Because that stuff is looking for somewhere to go, and in general, it's looking for ground. Mm -hmm. and, and that can, uh, depending on what the, the, the local situation is below the substation, or even building to building, house to house, if you have power looking for ground and it finds a weak point, Mm -hmm. That could have disastrous yeah, results. Now, you, you, this is what you refer to as flash arc? Arc flash. Arc flash. Yeah. This, describe what arc flash is, is for us. Yeah. Well, arc flash is excess power suddenly mm -hmm. finding a path to ground. Mm -hmm. All too often it's through an electrician or a HECO worker mm -hmm. who happens to be am in amongst the switchgear. Or there can be a defect or a flaw in a switch gear or something starting to fail and, and nobody knows it. Mm -hmm. And so it's like it's literally like a bomb going off. The, mm. the electrical shock as it bursts out of there could kill you. 
but it's the, the shock wave, the air shock wave that hits you and throws you against the walls, the cabinets, the floor. That's where it's like a bomb going mm -hmm. off. And um, like I said, 10 years ago, uh, we, we weren't being required to put in arc flash rated uh, breakers. Mm -hmm. Our guys mm -hmm. weren't wearing arc flash rated suits. Mm -hmm. um, most of the skilled PV installers, the older guys, mm -hmm. they're so nervous about it Mm -hmm. That they're wearing, they're wearing gloves, all this stuff because um, they could literally die mm -hmm. from something like mm -hmm. that. Yeah, that could be serious. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's what we're facing, and really for Hiko and Miko Helco, the PUC KIUC, KIUC, finding a cost-effective way to roll this out has been a challenge. Mm -hmm. They've been looking at big utility-level solutions. But the expertise, the, the background for that, especially as it relates to an isolated grid like ours, a lot of that doesn't exist. You're, gonna, you're trying to invent it. Mm -hmm. And HECO's been working hard at trying to figure that out, but it's been a challenge. And, the, mm -hmm. and they haven't mm -hmm. found anything really that's cost-effective for them that doesn't really hurt their bottom line. Mm -hmm. Could that be compared in very layman's terms to people who worship their uh, iPhone? And then uh, Apple or whoever comes out, look, I've got a new one. Yeah, oh, God, I got a, that. And it's only $1,200. And in the same way, if uh, the utilities are going to upgrade from the equivalent of an old iPhone to a brand new iPhone, yeah, twelve hundred dollars for us ain't cheap. It's uh, we're talking millions and gazillions. Right? We're talking for the utility. Yeah, yeah, we're talking billions. Here. Yeah, yeah. For yeah. the utility to upgrade their generators, the substations, and the mm -hmm. distribution grid mm -hmm. um, is billions, and they've known that for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, but while they knew that, they thought they had time to gradually ramp that up. Mm -hmm. But the speed of the adoption of PV mm -hmm. um, and uh, uh, they were caught by surprise by that. Mm -hmm. And so now they're in a situation where this excess PV is really hurting them. Yeah. So uh, part of my job is to get as much, to incentivize as much storage as possible. I don't know if, yeah, we haven't talked in a while, but um, uh, I'm related to the National Electrical Code as well. And there's the Hawaii Building Code Council. And just a few months ago, we adopted the 2017 National Electrical Code because it has four chapters on storage. And the plan checkers at the county level were really reluctant to permit storage because they didn't, is this thing going to blow up? Is it going to catch on fire? But now the submitter of the application can say, I am in conformance with 2017 National Electrical Code. Here's my stats. And the plan checker can feel very comfortable in saying, okay, you got it. So speeding up the, the permitting process vastly there. For us, it's been, we have actually have our permits go through on residential really fast. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. And that we, you know, our team has a track record. Um, yeah. So yeah, you, you're a trusted entity. Yeah. yeah, and we've been putting these things in for years mm -hmm, without any mm -hmm. problem. But uh, to make things cost effective for the county, the state, the PUC, for rate payers, um, one of the things they did come up with was time of use. Mm -hmm. And the time mm -hmm. of use rates, they just, I think they just changed it again where it went down from, if you were drawing at uh, between 9, 9 a.m. and 5 p.m., I think they made it 14.1 cents now on Oahu. Mm -hmm. It used to be 19 cents. Mm -hmm. So if you're drawing at 14.1, that's a powerful indicator of how much excess power they're trying to get rid of. Yeah, now, let, let's back up a little bit and explain time of use. Uh, just in Hawaii's example, at 3 o'clock in the morning, there's very, very low energy use, and it starts to ramp up around uh, 6 in the morning and gets pretty high by 10 in the morning, or not 9. And I think that is kind of what time of use is, is you charge a medium rate at certain times of day, a very low rate at other times of day, and a very high rate at another time of day. Yeah, it's so, punitive in the evening peak. Yeah. So what is happening, say, through the night and up until, say, 9, 9 in the morning, something like that? That would be the medium uh, price. And then the example you were giving, starting around 10 or whatever, when that sun is really beginning to power up those uh, PVs, then you 
Now, you, the utility drastically reduces the price by 14 point to, down to 14. Yeah, so at 9 a.m. it drops to 14.1.2. At yeah. uh, 5 p.m. it jumps up to like 48 cents. Yeah. But see, the, the old time off peak, which starts at 10 p.m., mm -hmm. they actually still made it higher than retail. It's at 34.1. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. like a, a penny or two higher mm -hmm. than mm -hmm. the old rate. So if you go to TOU, you are you, you, time, time, time of use. use. Yeah. You're gambling mm -hmm. that the only power you're drawing is from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. If you draw during the peak, you get hit. If you draw during the off peak, you get hit a little bit more than the old retail rate, which was 24/7. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So, one of my customers, I, all my customers, I, I put them on time of use, mm -hmm. and one of my customers on Molokai. Um, got a call from Miko. Uh, speaking of which, I believe we have a slide to illustrate yeah, this. Uh, yeah, in fact, we can go and bring up slide yeah. five or six. Because what no, you're trying uh, to... The, the next slide. That, that one works. Oh, oh, that'll yeah, work. that'll okay. work. Mm -hmm. So this is a, a house that has a leased PV system, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. he doesn't own the PV, all right? So we actually put batteries on his house and during, he makes excess power. So the batteries are absorbing his excess power, so he's not injecting it into the Molokai grid. Instead, it's going into his batteries. And you can see over there at 16, that's mm -hmm. 4 o'clock, 17 is 5 o'clock. That red is power being drawn from the grid at the lowest possible rate. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, that power being drawn from the grid may actually not be from the grid. That may be from the PV. Mm -hmm. Because we're not allowed to put that PV, that least PV system into, into the circuit. Yep. But we know his PV produces more than he uses. Mm -hmm. So, but what what's, you should see is at 17 there, 5 o'clock, there's no draw. Yep. So, we have him on a time of use programming. So, you can see from 5 o'clock at night um, till 10, there's no draw from the grid. Mm -hmm. And on that very cheery note, somehow we... We're just getting warmed up and we we're out of time. run out of time. <laughs> Dizan, please come back in the near future because for one thing, you'll have new news by then and, and we'll get much more into depth. Suffice to say, this is the future and Nick is Mr. Future Man here. <laughs> so that does it for the day. Howard Wig, Code Green with Nick Dizan, president of Need On Clean Energy. See you next time.